Hey everybody, this is Josh Cook, aka Seizures Palace, and today we're about to do song a week number 34. What? We're going to be doing some atmospheric electronic music that's kind of based around um, the sound of Mord Fustang and a little bit of Jus Affelstein again. Let's check it out. Alright, so let's take a quick little preview of what we uh, are looking at here. So we have the first section, which is the more atmospheric section. And big Valhalla reverb. Uh, later we have our first drop. Very simple and progressive. And that develops for a while. Later we have... Which leads into my favorite part, which is... And I think I'm definitely going to use a combination of these types of sounds again in the future. You get that liquidy, bubbly, morphing sort of sound on top of a really heavy, percussive, chuggy bass synth. And, and those two synths work really well together, I think, with uh, everything else complementing. So let's go through and take a look at what we got here. Kick, same as usual. It's tuned to G because the song is in G and I used kick two with a little bit of neutron on top. Every once in a while, neutrons got me out of a jam here. Not in this case. This is... This is too crazy to look like anything that Neutron would have done. This is something that I did um, to really get out a lot of the rings from these uh, really uh, simple kick to um, sine waves to start. They have quite a bit of uh, stuff I like to clean out of or clean out of them. And that's the kick there. And yeah, so Neutron's really cool. If you guys haven't used it yet, it's by Isotope. And what you can do is you can hit track assist while you're playing the song. It'll listen to whatever it is uh, that it's attached to, for example, Neutron's attached to the kick right now. It'll listen to the kick for a while, it'll analyze the information, and then EQ, compress, excite, stereo, uh, widen, uh, transient shaper, it adds all this stuff to it to correct the sound. Um, but at the end of the day, it's sort of like lander mastering. I mean, it's done by a robot, it's automated, it's algorithms, so it loses a bit of that human touch, but it gets you close to... Uh, to a good result and then you can kind of tweak it from there it gives you a good result but it doesn't get you a unique result so you can keep working on it um, on your own after to kind of get a good starting point with your mix enough about the kick drums same as usual i haven't really done too much there's some little percussive stuff that i added later on there's some more valhalla on that guy there uh, loop, a little bit of auto pan to kind of sweep it a little bit left and right. Uh, supercharger, which is pretty fun. It's a type of saturator compressor from Native Instruments that I rarely use, but it worked well on this. And then a little bit of solid bus compression after that. Here's the loop. So nothing too crazy, kind of 90s-ish sounding. Some sweeps, yada yada. Uh, Hi-hat loop. Nothing too crazy. Uh, some wind downs that were flattened. So, this is just me recording a loop into another channel while pitching it down. So you can't actually, here's a little thing if Ableton ever happens to see this, you can't actually automate this transpose wheel. Notice that as I'm moving it, the automation here isn't changing. There's no automation lane available. So you have to kind of, as you're pitching it down, record it into another track, or you can do the classic... Uh, resampling so that way anything that's going through the master chain you can record on any other track that is set to resampling as the input if that doesn't make sense then check out a YouTube video on it there's tons of stuff on it out there sub bass nice and classic I kept the uh, slink preset I added in a little bit of neutron just to see kind of um, how it might be able to be improved or what might be able to be changed with it uh, this dark electro synth that I've been using in uh, a few of the tracks now Gruel Tech and Dark Sizzle both use and that's without the redux it sounds cool with the redux as well too for the longest time I didn't realize but a lot of those dubstep guys from the mid, like around the bro step time or whatever the heck you want to call it, Moomba tone or whatever, um, they use this kind of ay, ay sort of sound and you can get that through Massive or Silent or uh, Serum, whatever it is that you're using. But I didn't realize that just throwing a bit of Redux on some really low sounds kind of gives that throatiness. So listen with and without. And then with. So I didn't actually use any Redux on this song, 
but uh, it can be lots of fun on a sound like that. Let me think of it. This doesn't need to be here. Saving up some CPU space. I probably won't save this anyway. Um, and then this was a bass drop that I uh, I think I created in Massive. It might have even been from some loops that I had. I never use synthesizer loops. It's kind of discrediting what I've spent years on trying to perfect, which is playing keyboard, trying to, I say perfect, synthesize sounds. I'm no crazy expert at synthesizing sounds, but damn, do I love experimenting with that stuff. Um, anyway, this was flattened for one reason or another, and it sounds like this. And just some basic EQ. I was back and forth on the idea of do I keep a lot of that high end? Do I get rid of some of that high end? At the end of the day, I wanted to cut through the mix, so... Kept a little bit in that area around 3K, but still ducked some out. Um, at this point, it's just force a habit to duck out the base around that area in case I want to throw in a lead later. And you can also get some disturbing rings around that 2, 3, or 4 kilohertz on bass. With that said, 2K is oftentimes really awesome to boost on bass too, so it really depends on the sound that you're working with. All right, this is the fun sound. Um, it's a silent preset. I won't bother going through the entire preset, but... Uh, there's an arpeggiator on it, and it's Silence Arpeggiator, but I wanted to show you guys what gives it that liquidy sound. And we've talked about this before. This is nothing new. It's an auto filter side-chained to... What is it side-chained to? Oh, it's side-chained to the side-chain. So it's side-chained to... Da, 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 go up to the top. This guy here, which is basically, if I just solo... That. And that's another trick by that guy, Slink, S-L-Y-N-K. It's just a way to really tighten up your side-chain... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Carrier, I guess? The, uh, we'll say trigger. So it's nice and short. It's really precise. And you can always lengthen the release on your sidechain compression uh, within your compressor. So if we go back here again, I'm going to just loop this little section. And if we listen without it, it sounds like this. <laughs> There's lots of reverb bleeding in that's been saturated. There's with the auto filter. So you can hear that pumping liquidiness. I will definitely make another drop like this again because I love that sound. It's definitely appealing. Uh, the Mord stuff. Yeah, this is worth mentioning. So this is a massive preset. I don't like going through all the synthesis. It can really slow these down. So do your own synthesis. Make your own thing. I think it's a preset. One by Echo Soundworks is called Keys 2, and it was from like an Electro bundle like three years ago. Nothing too fancy. Basically a super saw to a small extent. So if I solo that, you'll see I have Neutron on the clean. I'm using Neutron a bit too much, but... I paid for it as part of a bundle that came with Ozone, and I figured I might as well get my money's worth and try it out a bit. And it's showing me a couple things that I could do differently. What I love about it is it comes with an EQ with more dynamic EQ, and I could sidechain the dynamic EQ. What? What does that even mean? What it means is that I can take a small portion of the frequency spectrum and say anytime another instrument plays or another sound plays, just that little EQ bump is going to dip down. So it's not sidechain compress compressing the entire signal, but rather just a, fr a small frequency band. Or you can choose to make it a big one. You can do whatever. This is really great just for cleaning out around that 300 hertz zone. If you have something that has like a lot of uh, sort of, I don't want to say presence, but a lot of frequency content going on in that area. And then another instrument sounds really good in that area too. One of the two can duck just that area out of the other synth, if that makes sense. So uh, I guess I could just show you guys what I'm talking about. Hopefully Neutron did it in this case. Yeah, so take a look at number one right here. Now, the difference here is it's ducking down anytime there's a lot of frequency content from this synth in this area. It's not sidechain to do that when another instrument plays, but you have that choice down here in this sidechain option. So, what makes this sound kind of like Mord Fustang? A little bit, I wasn't trying to rip the guy off, but I do like his atmospheric uh, way of approaching uh, basic corded synths, is to have really, really huge reverb on that synth, sidechained to that same synth. So what that means is that there's tons of reverb happening all the time. But as long as that synth is making a sound that isn't just reverb, the reverb is going to duck down in volume. So we can see that over here in the sidechain compression. If I got rid of it, washed out and kind of muddy, 
Doesn't sound horrible. But here's what. I could probably undo a little bit of that. Just loosen it up. I actually think that sounds a little bit better. So maybe I was overdoing it a little bit, but that's kind of the idea. Also, too, um, I got thinking about it recently. I was watching some of these videos, and I realized that the microphone volume isn't always matched with this volume. And, yeah, I realize I'm trying to help you guys with audio and audio-related production and sound design and yada, yada, yada. So why isn't, why isn't my sound perfect? It's because... I had to do some really weird workarounds to be able to get this whole setup to work on my weird Hackintosh computer. And it's not actually running through Ableton, so I can't really compress or anything like that. I have to run it straight into my software OBS. If I run it into Ableton, then I get latency, which is especially bad when I'm trying to do the real-time uh, walkthroughs. So as I'm making the song, I'm going to do some more of those soon, by the way. But as I'm making the song and you guys are watching... Um, it, there's going to be some latency with the microphone and even with the, the keys sometimes too. And so just running it through OBS just cleared up all the latency. It just means that sometimes it's going to distort. And that's that's okay with me if it's okay with you. Moving on. So yeah, I wanted to show you guys the sidechain compression onto the reverb. And by the way, if you guys don't know how to do these little audio effect racks, there's audio effect rack up here. Or you can just take anything like this guy here, sidechain compression, and command G to group open up a little rack, right click a new chain, and there you go, you can kind of have various chains that you start to blend in with one another. And it's a good alternative to having a whole lot of extra sends in your session. Uh, this ARP I made with Silent, and then I threw some basic effects on it, flattened it, and then here's the effects that you're seeing after that flattening. So some filtering. So that's basically it there, nothing too crazy. And then a descending ARP. We hear it go from right to left. There's some pan automation. If I click the pan, you'll be able to see all that automation going on. And just the notes kind of remind me of like uh, Stranger Things or some sort of 80s-esque sort of synth sound or show. But uh, yeah, so we had the descending ARP and the other ARP. We had the Mord sound, which is side chaining the reverb and giving a huge washed out reverb afterwards. The awesome epic end synth, as well as the flattened bass, the techno bass, some sub bass, and a whole lot of effects and percussion and drum stuff. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully you got something out of it. As promised, pretty soon I will be doing another walkthrough video where I'm actually recording the song and you guys get to watch it as I go through. Also, I've been doing a lot of electronic stuff lately and that's kind of me playing to, dare I say, my strengths, but at the same time, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm ready for something different. So um, I'm debating with the idea of some experimental music. I'm not even a huge fan of really experimental like harmonies and stuff, but maybe I'll do something like that. Might do like something reggae or Latin or pfft, I have no idea. Feel free to put in a comment and recommend what you guys want to hear. Uh, at this point, it's it's all just for fun. So just let me know what you guys want to hear and I'll write something in that style as long as long uh, as long as I can do it. Anyway, one last time, my name is Seizures Palace, Josh Cook. This is song of week number 34. I will see you next week. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.